Hello and welcome back to the 2023 Open at Austin. You are watching the final round, the back nine, the last nine holes of this DGPT Elite Series event on Jomez Pro with Nate Sexton, Jeremy Colling, and Paul Ulibar. Eagle McMahon was getting hot there in the back nine. Or in the front nine, the back of the front nine. Excuse me, we are finally going to the back nine here. Five under, and that puts him in a tie for first place with one Austin Turner charging up from what, the fifth or sixth card. We said the top four might be able to do it, but who knows at this point? There's just so many people in contention. That's what this course does. There's a lot of those super bonus birdies and a lot of those holes that just yield a ton of pars. Who is going to take advantage of this back nine and just blow us away? If someone can get to five or six under in this back nine, I think I like their chances, but just don't know what is to hold. And don't forget to check out our Patreon for the giveaway that we have going on. Hole 10, par three, 398. Golf green right here in the middle. You gotta get over that, but you gotta get the disc back down before that cart path on the left, which is also out of bounds. And if you do go that hyzer out, it's gotta be flat. Anything with any spike angle on this green, it just doesn't really want to move unless you have more flat than hyzer. Like this is a nice angle. This probably will get a good skip off the green. Yes. Just watch out for this big ah. roll. We saw Macbeth get about a 50 foot roll yesterday. Just checking up. Is that the same one that rolled on the on the front nine kind of backwards? I don't think it's the same disc. Okay. But this green is so cruel for that exact reason. This is I don't know. This is might be too wide. It might be long enough. Yes, it's long enough. That's a good miss. Yeah, what is that, 45? Something like that. About six feet from the edge, I'm thinking, on the circle one. Calvin says, hold me now. Going a little bit tighter with his hyzer. Can he put the brakes on? I like that one. Very me nice. Me too. Spotter likes it. I don't know anything about rally driving. I know Finns love yeah. it. Yes, they do. And that shirt gives me those vibes. I yeah. Mean, you know, uh -huh. vinyl with the checkers looks good on them. It run across that green. Oh, this could be such a good roll. Yeah. Man. Not to be. Not kinda, quite. Yeah, he kind of knew it right away. You could see him kind of scoff and turn around. Yes. Disappointed. Needed a good break to get over that green If once you've thrown it that wide. That wide branchy tree really forces more yanks because the the mistake you cannot make is hitting those inside limbs. And it, it does push a lot of those drives onto that out of bounds green. You just never quite know what you're gonna get as far as rolls on this green. Looks like Eagles checked up. Cole's got work left and he's still up. Always tough to have two consecutive putts, but man, doesn't show any nerves there as he drains the putt from the edge of the circle. Big time opportunity for Calvin to make up room or ground on this card. Gets him to 13. He's actually been playing pretty well since his most recent double bogey. You very rarely ever have to say that about Calvin's Double bogeys, but he had a couple on the front nine that really set him back. Hole 11 is a par 3, it's 335 feet. You have about 43 gaps right in front of you that you can choose from. The biggest being on the very left side, which would be the sidearm hyzer angle to skip it up into the screen. You also have about 
honestly four gaps to the right of that that you can choose from, which some people decide to go hyzer with the backhand. If you're a right-handed thrower. Liking this. Whoa, slow down. Good drive. Oh, mm. boy. Some scrambling coming up here for Eagle, hopefully. Quite nice. Surprised by a few of these plays from Cole. I know that he has just a mammoth sidearm as well. Oh, yeah, he. I, I would say he's definitely a backhand dominant guy, though. He d does yeah. love the turnover, yeah. likes to throw putters. Okay. Just way too high out of Vino's hand. The gap is pretty low. It looks to be pretty high until you release the disc and then you realize, oh boy. This is not Spies going where you want it to go. Of, oh boy. It's not that long, but it's going to be squirrely. Vino's just kind of mm. leaking. He's leaking some fuel right here. Well... If Eagle makes this and he does not, that leaky fuel isn't going to hurt him too much because he's going to be within three of the pace on the card. Bogey here is a disaster. Yeah, you, you just can't Coming do down the stretch. I mean, this is one of the easiest holes on the course. You draw this one up on the game plan as a certifiable musket with, with the holes coming. This starts the stretch of musket birdies. I've seen in the past, we've, we sometimes get some flack for calling holes muskets. I guess I, I want to just quickly clarify. To these guys, it feels that way. When you're playing the hole at the time, it feels like if I don't birdie this hole, I'm losing ground. And in this tournament, one stroke is a lot of ground. You catch flack for that? Well, listen to this. You're talking to three people who have over 50 years of experience, and we've seen every single round that a lead card has had for the past three years. So if you want to argue with somebody, it might not want to be us because... Uh, kind of know what we're talking about most of the time we do make a few mistakes here and there but for the most part nate kind of keeps us in check <laughs> <laughs> hole four six hundred four <laughs> yeah part 12 yeah. <laughs> nate Back help us help us nine. <laughs> what are we working with nate oh man it's hole 12 it's par four if this can get under a branch it could be pretty huge it yeah. doesn't do it it's a I think the turnover here is kind mm. of a fool's gold play. Like it, it sort of looks like it. I mean, certainly it could go really far, yeah. but I just am not seeing any get through. It's, and this one is cooked. Yeah, that's overturned in OB. Can it? Oh, boy, it worked its way to the edge, but not enough. That is a disastrous mistake for Cole. I mean, in good position, that is going to be... I. That's two strokes off, Birdie. Yeah, I, Whoa, so close to the OB also. There's this no, one's safe, though, eh? Yeah. Yeah, it sure is, eh? He's not going to be able to play for Birdie, though. No, probably not. I, and this one might be in good position. If it weren't OB, what is happening right now? What? So Cole brought this back. Where is he going right now? Well, cutting the corner with a forehand... Any can this even find safe ground? Wow. That was cool. Whoa. That, what did you find there, young fella? I wonder if most players would have even seen it or thought to try it. it that was ambitious and looks to have paid off in a big way. Going for fool's gold, coming up with diamonds. That was insane. Eagle needs this to start turning, and that's going to stay out. Wow. Calvin, low forehand, looking for the big skip. 
and getting a pretty big skip. That one tree at the very edge of the circle. Going to slow it down just enough to make Calvin work for it. Good shot from Vino there, out of position. Yeah, that's that's really good from there. It's so tight, so tight that mm -hmm. you roll the wrist over just a little bit and you're straight out of bounds. You uh, get the nose up just a little bit. He needs the nose up and a little. That looked good. That would have been a huge pounce on the card situation. Calvin can do the same, and he does. He drills it. It's been putting kind of nice today. Very nice. Five out of the last six. <laughs> and Cole, this would be just a stellar par save and just can't quite commit to the height. Man, it always hurts after you make a phenomenal oh, shot like yeah. that just to realize that you could have just pitched around the side, got your mm -hmm. <laughs> But I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, hats it's always off to tough. You for the effort, yeah. no doubt. Yeah, I mean, you got to make opportunities for yourself, but it just hurts when you don't cash one in. You make that phenomenal shot and not able to close the deal with the putt. And what happened here? My goodness. Eagle at 18 under through 10, and he goes bogey, double bogey to drop to 15. I would have never guessed that if he was going to wow. go three over in two holes, it would have been on 10 or 11 and 12. Have to be two of the easiest holes on the course. Uh, yeah, I mean, 11 is the third easiest. 12 is right there in the middle, but it's just very gettable. I think it was more difficult than it needed to because they out of balance. I think this golfing can improve our community in many ways. It brings people together. That maybe some of these kids who feel a little bit lost could find something like disc golf, find friends, find people to come together and play the sport. Encouraging people to work together, kids to know one another, love one another a way for these kids to have a really fun thing to do together. I think that's what we need in the world. Love one another and do life together. Hole 13 is a par 3, 352 feet up the hill. Up the hill about 25 feet or so. It's just, do you pick the forehand? Throw the backhand turnover. Do you go back in hyzer? There's also the roller play, but this out of bounds on the right side really makes you think. The low ceiling comes into play about 100 feet short of the pin as well. And going uphill, you really got to figure out a way to solve this puzzle. It looks like Calvin is going backhand and hyzer. And um, too much power can be a problem. I know, super flippy disc here, wide roller. Does this have enough forward? Almost just too flippy, not quite straight enough. Interesting to see Cole Bogey hold 12 again in his 12 under course record breaking performance in Chase Card Saturday. That was his only blemish on the scorecard. So he he backs up his bogey in round two with another bogey in round three. I would definitely like to see him go to the forehand drive Yes, on 12. Keep it out wider mm -hmm. and let the fade come a little bit later. Incredible roller drive for Eagle. That's going to set this, sh whatever the expression is, set this ship right? Get the ship right? Set this... Set the sails to get that ship <laughs> trucking. Yeah, whatever it is. Good drive for Eagle. Right the ship. That no, that sounds wrong. That's not it. That's not it. Whole eh. ships the truck right past the basket. There, he'll have a bit of a comebacker. I think Eagle came up a. A heck of a lot shorter than it appeared. But he's inside 40, so count it. This one is really confusing because those whiskers, some the, the FPO basket is quite close. Uh, so uh -huh. some of those whiskers, I think, are phantoms. Like, they're not really for the MPO right. basket. So you can have some sort of optical illusions when you're 
looking at these putts, if they look like they are not outside the circle, it might be because they aren't, and that whisker was for a different basket. I don't think it would be a bad idea to have the um, the Color. bullseye whiskers white, maybe, and then the circle's edge whiskers orange, because from a certain distance, they, they just kind of blend in, and not that it really matters that much. It's yeah, or or I was thinking the FPO whiskers could be a different color yeah, than yeah. the MPO whiskers. Uh -huh. And just to get it out of the way, we'll take pink. I love pink. 16 under a piece for Cole and McMahon. Those scores, my goodness, I would not have thought that the hot score on lead card at this point would be at 16 under the way we finished that front nine. But here we are. I mean, they have to be feeling the heat at this point. They're going to need a strong close. Too many players are in the neighborhood of those scores from the leaderboard check-ins we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. the fourth card's already finished. And the third card is barely still on the course. There's not many cards out there right now. So they're, they're starting to really know what that number needs to be. Eagle needs this to slow down. Not going to happen. Unless it rolls back in. Not going to happen. Shipwrecked. <laughs> I think it's that expression. Yeah. No, that's not it. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. And that's the difference in about 15 feet of where those two skipped, and, and that's just a pivotal 15 feet. Very wide. Not bad, though. A little bit of a scary putt coming up, but inside the circle, I think. More direct route from Cole. This is coming in fast. And puts the brakes on just in time. Now, Eagle four par. Hmm. What a bad stretch for Eagle McMahon. Good putt there from Vino, like you said. That's a nervy little fella. And Cole collects the birdie. And now he is the outright leader on the lead card at 17 under. Heimberg lurking all of a sudden. Yeah. Look at yeah, that green yeah. down there. He is. He's almost back in it with all these guys. Yeah. I mean, he is back in it with all these yeah. guys. After just being, I remember a scorecard showing up where it was 15, 15, 15, 10. Yeah. Oh, wow. Earlier in this round. Whoa. Yeah, whoa, 16. He's now second on the card, my goodness. And that's what not bogeying and birdieing will do for you. But wow, it, that, that did kind of happen pretty quick. Well, 15, par three, 425 downhill with the OB golf green. That's unlikely to come into play for anybody, but what will probably come into play is this OB area behind the pin. It's especially tight on the left side, but even directly behind the basket, you might have just barely circle one, probably not even that. So speed control important. You take anyone else on the first four cards, first five holes and put it with Calvin's everything else since, and we're looking at potential new course record, it feels like. He's putting together a very solid composure round. So big from Vino. And it's pretty good. Oh, wow. I was just about to question the play. And then I'm just, can't do it. Great shot. This is just steaming. Yeah, it's drifting too far left. The OB comes in a lot quicker on that side of, of the green. It's going to be a lengthy par putt coming. Just to go even higher and wider, Eagle shows what he can do. 
Will the eagle forehand come back? You, you got to think he's he's so young. If he if that was it, but is that his priority or is he a bit gun shy now after the injury? I I wonder. Oh, mm. Calvin, great effort. It's a great question. Yeah, I don't know. I I hope he has a team around him of of doctors or whoever it is, physical trainers mm-hmm. that are giving him the right information and. That's a good putt right there, but Eagle's not afraid to take time off, get healthy. Mm-hmm. He's not afraid to show the world, like, hey, I don't need one. I'll just beat every, I mean, what, European Open? Did, yeah, we, did anybody sure. watch that where he averaged 1080 yeah. without it? He's definitely a guy. Uh, uh, Cole just low. Eagle's definitely a guy who puts in the work. You know, if, if he has a good fitness plan, he's very motivated and sticks to that kind of thing. So I, I'm hopeful that we're going to see that amazing forehand back again eventually. Great birdie for Vino. And, I mean, just a a crushing hopes double bogey for Cole. Just can't have a stretch like that at any point. And if you're going to have a stretch like that, you just hope it's not on the final round. When you were in contention just a few holes ago, but that's going to drop him to 15. And as we take a look in our... Leaderboard check-in, not enough holes. Now let's remember that we do have the Eagle Bull 16 right here. Mm-hmm. 515 feet, par four, 515 feet is nothing for a lot of these people. That's all highs are most of the time. But you can go for the Eagle 2 but it's the easiest birdie you'll ever get if you just go yeah. a little bit right and pitch over to there to that fairway and have about 250 in on a short shot. Yeah, tops. Two tops. tops. Yep. It was but playing, I think they're all going. It was playing just a bit harder in this final round. It was a little bit heady. Well, no, I think more people were just going that's for what, it that's and, and going and going out too. of bounds. Yeah. But, I mean, we did have a, a full-fledged big ripping tailwind in round one, and then just like a gentle tailwind in round two, the wind has switched directions. And, I mean, yes, of course, people are going to be a little bit more aggressive, but I think it's also the fact that it's not a helping wind. Well, it's not helping. Eagle heavy on the hyzer. and kind of got to go. I think he's gone. Okay. Yeah, he went. Hasn't gone all the way. Well, do you see how high that was? It was just like the highest hyzer ever. <laughs> like, what is not perfect about that? A lot of things to like about this one, I think. Okay, just could... Okay, he could have been like 10 feet longer, and that would have got over that ridge and maybe would have been parked. But Calvin up there putting for Eagle. Cole, high, wide. That's in the deepest part of OB. Can he get there? No. Oh, that is just a foot short of landing in bounds. He's calling provisional from the drop zone. The drop zone is for anyone. If you go out of bounds, you can choose the play from the last place you're in bounds or just go to the provisional drop zone. Or not provisional drop zone, but in this case it is. Not a big fan. Not a big fan of the drop zone. Yeah, I it think takes away it, the risk reward. Yeah, it's like mm-hmm. guaranteed par kind of. I mean, you can mess it up, but it's two hundred feet. He's definitely messed oh. it up. Oh, okay. So that's provisional. That's the provisional, as if he crossed the corner. I guess I'm not quite sure what that throw was about. But Vino's bid for eagle, more of a layup. Now this is a legitimate eagle chance. So Eagle will walk to 17 at 17 under. This putt to get Calvin to 18. (laughs) Wow. He is setting that thing in the basket right now. Yeah, I mean, it was an inch high on the whole 
before from getting the two there. Yep. So after everything, I believe it was a, a bogey for Cole. I guess it was. Because if he threw from the drop zone, his shot was parked, right? I think that was his drop zone shot where he just went past it or... He, he, he didn't get to take the drop zone, I think. He, he end, they ended up ruling that he had crossed farther gotcha. up. Gotcha. Yeah, that, make, that makes with. sense. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, in that situation, you have to say, if I did cross, I will take that because in the situation there, he would have been like, oh, well, no, I'm going to take my drop zone shot because it's yeah. five feet away. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's you not You can't allowed. do that. That's what he, the provisional implies. You have to if state I the intent. If I am up there, then that's where I'm going to be playing for. Well, from the easiest hole in the course to the third hardest, followed by the toughest hole, 17. It's only 436. It only takes 190 plus a 240. But there's about 7 billion trees in the way. Yeah, it's funny. It's only it's only 400 Whoa. trees that is far down the yeah. fairway. Yeah. 436 feet, but I feel like a lot of people like throw 800 foot worth of shots here going 10 feet at a time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. I'm just floored by how good, not only did that make it way around the corner, but it stayed in the middle. A lot of these shots that we used to get around the corner are on the edge, which is just as bad as the rough. On the edge normally means fine, not here. You have to be in the wood chips to have a clean shot, and Calvin got way around the corner and so far everyone else struggling a bit Cole that's in the rough it's just a scramble town if you, I mean, you're just not in the prime spot and Vino's just trying to oh boy you can't even see the people yeah you you don't have to even put words behind that. You can just look at that and see that's what he's going to see when he gets there. Look, it just should doink. Wow. <laughs> Trying to get a little creative. Cole is here with the up and over play. Oh. There is a dangerous OB over there. Fortunately, that's a real creative way to go about 36 feet. This is a crush drive. Have you seen anything this far? I have not. I really didn't even think it was possible to go just straight 90 degrees right, equally as far right as it as it is from the tee, from that corner. Wow. Very good. Oh, oh bad man. kick there. Nice putt. So this four par for Vino and just didn't have the ceiling to even give it a legitimate run. If he doesn't have the ceiling, yeah. Yeah, no nobody really does. Right. Good scramble for Cole. Yeah, good putt. Tough back nine for him. A lot of mm -hmm. lot of stuff he can take from this round into uh, the next one. He's getting that experience. You know, he can also leave here with a certified course record on tour. Yeah. That's uh that's a rare thing to take home with you. Something to be said about leading a tournament too. Mm -hmm. You can be like, All right, I got what it's take what it takes. Now I just have to finish the job. Calvin to back up the eagle with essentially, I mean, it plays like an eagle to birdie this one. Calvin's yeah. just beating all these guys by a lot. <laughs> <laughs> all of the sudden, right? What a close. I mean, imagine if he could have gotten away from those double bogeys early. They, they almost didn't even feel warranted. It just Certainly it's, not hole one. I mean, yeah. he made a great run and just got a brutal roll. That's crazy. Final hole. 
I mean, I don't know. Do do we do we say what's kind of transpired at this point? I think we got to say. I mean, the win is no longer. I, I don't know if you guys have taken that from our tone, but the win is no longer in these guys. We've got a score at 22 under par, and it is the young, the talented, the Gannon, the Iceman Burr, who is just on a tear so far this season and the last season. And we're going to go ahead and get a check-in with him here. Sitting at 21 going into the hole, no one really was in legitimate ch oh, chance no, 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 to quite no. get to 21. So, I mean, essentially all he's got to do here is play for par. The thing is, there's just no way to play hole 18 for a par. It is not that easy to do. It's just not really designed for a layup anywhere. you got to get aggressive. So Gannon says, sure, I'll play your game, Harvey Pennick. And he just pipes one right up there to 22 feet. That short putt to get to 22. You think he's going to miss that putt? You thought wrong. You hear them saying that an eagle would be required on either 17 or 18 to catch Gannon. And that is going to be for the win at the Open at Austin. And we're talking consecutive events now with a chase card champion never before happened at elite series these are the days the parody is high the town is good and we had the tightest race ever no surprise whatsoever it's crazy to me that this is a this is something new to the sport of disc golf of having to learn to play in a tight race like this it's not something that we've we've really ever done. We've had tight races, of course. Jeez, Jeez Eagle, we chill that is out, out brother. Nuts. Man. But you know, that is flexing. Nate and I were talking just yesterday that back in the day, you had a lead card. Fourth place was four back. Usually, usually like, like uh -huh. something like that. Yeah, yep. it was like usually two guys. One of them named like something like Paul, and the other one named like. Rocky or something, something <laughs> kind of like that. You know, it'd be like that, and then those guys would be out there up ahead. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was like Rocky, P yeah. Pete and Rocky or something, and yeah, they would Pete be, and, Rocky. Yeah. and they would be up there like four clear. You yeah. know, or if we, if you were lucky, yeah. or one, or one guy would be out ahead. I think we're we're just witnessing some of the greatest disc golf battles that have ever transpired look at that thing hang on to inbound Vino, let's go what a finish no pun intended but with that being said it's a new skill that everybody's going to have to develop to be able to play this game of everybody's right there be smooth be meticulous don't throw away easy holes pars are actually going to be more lucrative yeah and the lesson we're learning from this guy right here, never quit. Because Calvin may not win today, but he's pushing up onto the podium. Yeah, he is. And, well, he's T3 right now. He's and, got a chance to take third place outright with two doubles on the course where you can't take it even a bogey. Listen, he birdies this hole. He gets a 20 under. I'm sorry, but Gannon did go for this hole. And that brings bogey mm. into play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And so, oh, it's, Eagle, bad break. Yep, yeah, that is a bad break. And then he went for the putt, which brings bogey into the into yeah, play. So away. he had a chance the whole time. Obviously, hindsight's twenty twenty. But mm. Heimberg's not twenty though, just no. nineteen. Yeah, but you get what I'm saying. He was in it the whole time. Absolutely. That's that's the future. Of, of what we're we are going to be calling Cole's name for many years to come I feel and future is bright for that young man and and future is bright for this young man as well because Eagle is very much a young man yes but is he 23 still or is he 24 somewhere in there he's 24 going on 40 as far as experience goes I mean we often talk about the, the teenagers but He's not even 25 yet, and it just feels like he's old guard at this point. He kind of is. Tied third. Yeah. Tied for third. From the depths. Yep. From, t from 10 under. I mean, he was 10 under. <laughs> yeah.
33 champion of the Open at Austin, presented by Lone Star, Cannon Bird. Yeah, it feels great. First, uh, first Elite Series win. I had a good game plan coming into this week. I know a lot of people didn't like the course. I tried to stay positive about it and use it to my advantage. I never gave up and uh, you know, made a lot of clutch That's shots awesome. towards the end. So I, I said no matter what happens, no matter how bad my shot was, to stay positive, you know, maintain that moving forward. And uh, yeah, huge crowd. Appreciate all you guys. Austin's amazing. And uh, the course was great. Can't wait to come back. Pretty good lasso form, pretty good <laughs> tournament. Congratulations to Gannon Burr. Just proving it again. What a performance coming from that chase card. Never say die, 22 under over Simon Lazat, James Proctor, and Calvin Heimberg tied for third. Nearly 30 players within 10 shots of the lead. I mean, just those little small mistakes, that one missed approach, that one out of bounds, that bad kick, that bad roll away, the putt you didn't take enough time on, just those things add up. You could have seen any one of these names there at the end, but in the end, it was Gannon Burr, his first ever Elite Series win. Did it like Will Schustrick. Will Schustrick's first major, first big win was, the, was a major, then he started winning all the Elite Series events. Coincidentally, Will Schustrick was one of Gannon Burr's big time mentors. We got something special brewing, guys. This is a good, talented field. Thanks, everybody, for watching the Open at Austin and being here with us for all three days. We had a good time. Thanks, especially to the Founders Club, and we will catch you guys for the next one. Be there. <laughs>